Hey, art nerds. So today we're going to be doing a still life, but we're going to be doing kind of an unusual still life. I want to kind of build on some of the concepts I've talked about in some of my other volumetric drawing videos. So I set up a still life and I've taken some photos of it. I'm going to print those out and I'm going to draw over them with you guys to kind of show you how these objects can turn into basic three-dimensional shapes like cylinders, cones, pyramids, cubes, and spheres. So I tried to select a variety of objects that can easily translate into those shapes to help you guys better understand volumetric drawing. So I have here a printout of that still life I showed you guys. This is a little bit easier than trying to draw it digitally, at least for me. And I'm going to apply nature's layers. I'm gonna <laughs> apply some tracing paper on top of it. And I'm recording this tutorial to help out my students in my drawing class over at the Little Art House, but also to help some of you guys out who might be struggling with improving your art, or you wanna learn a new art style, or you're new to drawing in general. One of the big disappointments I have with how art is taught in the US at public schools is that volumetric drawing is not always taught, often it's not taught, and it's one of the things that can really make the difference for struggling young artists or uh, artists who's struggling at any age in how they see the world and how the world breaks down into shapes. So basically, every object in the world breaks down into one 3D shape or multiple 3D shapes. So we've talked about this before in our learning how to draw volumetrically videos. So this is just kind of a continuation of the same, but we have here some basic 3D volumetric forms. We have a couple of spheres. We have a few views of cubes. We have a couple of cylinders. We have some cones, we have some triangles. I'm sorry, pyramids, three-sided triangular pyramids. We have a four-sided pyramid. We have a couple different views of cone and cylinder. And then we have another cube. And these are all to help my students in my class. I'm gonna create a printable for them, but I'm also going to make these resources available to my art nerds over on Patreon. So if you're interested in learning how to draw and you're looking for something a little bit more accessible, you might want to join me at patreon.com slash soup. My art nerds are the people who help make content like this possible. They are the sponsors of this channel. You can learn more about where those pledges go over at patreon.com slash soup, of course, but they're going to have this video before anybody else. So if you want early access to great art tutorials, head on over there and check it out. So I'm going to scan these and collate these into a resource sheet for my students to practice drawing because we did a skill assessment and it seems like their classes haven't really covered volumetric shapes yet. They haven't gotten to that point in geometry and it seems like their art classes maybe haven't gotten to this point either. But these are really important skills for understanding volumetric drawing, for understanding volumetric perspective, for understanding perspective almost at all. So I definitely want to make sure that they get the good basics here. And I think I'm going to record a tutorial just on freehanding these shapes as well, because that's something that I think everybody can benefit from practicing more of myself included. So our goal in today's demonstration is to take the still life we've created and to first figure out the basic shapes. I'm going to use a red pencil to do that. And we have quite a few shapes here to work from. We have a sphere almost for our Daruma doll. It's kind of an egg shape, but eggs and spheres are built along the same premise. We have a lot of cylinders with these washi tape rolls.
and you guys notice how the circles we draw for the, the top, they kind of change depending on the angle of the washi tape rolls as well as our viewing angle. And I went for fairly common around my studio objects. Um, you guys might have similar objects like these at home. They're objects I use all the time. We have another cylinder here. We have a sphere for the cat's head and another sphere for the cat's head. And then we have, I know, a couple of lumpy shapes there. Then we have this little drawer unit. One of the drawers out, but we're not going to worry about that right now. That is a rhomboid technically, but just think of it as like a tall cube. And each of the drawers inside would be built along the same lines. We have a bottle of gum Arabic, which is used in watercolor painting, and that is a cylinder. And then it's got another cylinder on top of that, and then another cylinder on top of that, and then another cylinder on top of that. So you guys can start to see how these shapes are coming together. We have my addiction, a coffee cup, you can think about this either as a cone that comes to a point way down here, or you can think of it as a cylinder that just kind of tapers. On top of this, we have more cylinders. And understanding how to draw volumetrically is useful not only for drawing from what you see, but it's going to allow you to draw from your imagination with confidence. We have more washi tape rolls up here. Those are cylinders. We have this pine cone, and it's kind of a curvy shape. You could draw it either as a cylinder, or you can draw it as a curved kind of cone, like a horn shape. We'll skip the leaves for now. We have, they're kind of taco shaped because they've, they've bent in on themselves. We have a stapler and the stapler itself is kind of an unusual shape, but you can start with just blocking in cubes and that'll help you as you draw this shape in perspective as well. And I have tutorials actually where we talk about perspective one point and two point. We have a cylinder up here holding watercolor brushes. We have this clip here is gonna be an interesting one. We'll get to that in a minute. We have a sphere here in the form of a calcifer paper clip holder. And then on top of it, we have a small couple of small cylinders and then this is almost like a really narrow pyramid and then this wire here would be a cylinder but it's so narrow you don't necessarily have to think about it too much then we have another little bottle over here and that is a cylinder with a cylinder on top and then just like with the gum Arabic, another cylinder there. Mm -hmm. So apologize for that buzzing. I use my phone to record and sometimes mm -hmm. it captures mm -hmm. notifications. I need to turn those off. Anyway, so the clip is interesting. It is a cylinder because it bulges out and then it's got two metal plates and then those metal plates connect up to this part, which is the clip, and that's fanned out a bit. And then we have over here, we have a music box. This is a cube. 
not going to draw the insides of it just yet. Then we have a brush holder, which I know it looks complicated, but the whole point of learning how to draw volumetrically is how to simplify things. So this would be a really, really narrow cube shape itself. So let's take a look. And for my art nerds who want to practice along, I'll share the photograph with you guys. Okay, so this is what we have. This is everything kind of broken down into more basic shapes. So now let's work on refining this. And for that, I'm gonna need another sheet of tracing paper. So my friends who like to work digitally and are comfortable working on your phone or have a tablet, what you can do is to practice this. You can take a picture of your own still life and you can practice drawing just the basic shapes on top of it just to kind of understand how everything breaks down into these basic shapes. So I've got another layer of tracing paper. Just putting the final touches on it. We're going to draw the rest in blue, and I'm not going for super accurate. I do recommend you guys draw from life. I do recommend you guys practice doing still lives. These are all valuable things. They're going to help you learn and help you improve as an artist, but I don't necessarily think we need to focus today on getting everything perfect. So since we're just kind of learning the basics. So I have the image up on my computer screen as well because I can't actually see this super well. So remember we called the leaves tacos. Sometimes it helps to think about things as other things to better understand what's going on. And this leaf here at the bottom is kind of curled under because I allowed it to dry. Then we have our pine cone. So I'm working foreground to background images or objects that are closer to us, the viewer, and then we're gonna work towards the background images. But I have everything sketched in, everything drawn in volumetrically using the base shape. So we're just kind of adding details, refining things and figuring things out, figuring out where everything goes. So for the pine cone, we have what's visible are these little triangular shapes. So this is why I tell my younger students, I know we're all, we all prefer to draw in math class. Some of us do actually pay better attention if we're doodling. I was one of those. However, it is important to pay attention, particularly in um, algebra and in geometry because perspective is a lot of algebra and ge obviously geometry is going to be really important and for those of you who might want to become architects then it's going to be even more important to understand ratios and to understand being able to divide units up and to do conversions so even though i'm one of the people who wishes art were taught more in school and prioritized more in school i definitely do think math is important and I wish teachers would find ways to make it more extracurricular, make it more multi-curricular, multi-disciplined, bring some artists in maybe. Okay, so we have our pine cone just kind of roughly sketched in. We have our leaves. Next, we're gonna do our Daruma doll, who is egg-shaped. I really like Daruma dolls, partially because you can't knock them down. They just always get back up. As a comic artist, that's something that's really important. Never really getting knocked down fully, always being able to get back up. Having a thick skin is important. So then we're gonna do our washi tape rolls. Now, the washi tape rolls are interesting because they are hollow cylinders, 
So I drew a circle there in the middle. And they are also precariously stacked. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to be able to draw several different views of cylinders for you guys. Sorry, sometimes I can't always talk and draw. You guys have that problem? I think it's because it's using similar parts of my brain. Then we have another one up here. And I forgot to draw the paint tube for you guys. So we'll need to do that. And working with two colors of lead is going to be beneficial for those of you who are just new to this because it's going to help you see um, see where your lines are. So we did our rough sketch with the volumetric drawing and now we're just kind of refining things and we're using the red lead for the underdrawing and then we're using the blue lead to kind of refine our sketch. And you guys can set up still lives at home, still lives at home. Not sure how to... So Kitty has a weird fluffy shock of old rabbit fur. She's from my ugly cat collection. And she's got two little triangles for ears. These are really going to be triangular pyramids. And she's got a little bump bump for a nose and two little round eyes. But her head is a sphere for the most part with some indentations and some protrusions. But she's mostly a sphere. And then her little ball of yarn is a sphere. And this one's a little bit easier because the yarn that they've wrapped around it kind of shows the form. And I know there's a lot of talk about tracing being bad, okay? And in a lot of instances it is, but in an educational instance like this, where we're learning and we're understanding the different forms and we're trying to see things a little bit more clearly, drawing is a really helpful education tool. So this little tube of brush cleaner is actually not quite round. It's been squared off. Then we have our tube of paint. So it starts cylindrical and then it narrows. So it's kind of like, almost like a cone, but kind of also like a pyramid because it's a little bit more boxy than a cone. And if you guys remember the photo, it's folded over at the top. And then the cap itself is a cylinder. Then we have our bottle of gum Arabic. Remember, we said it was a cylinder, but it has a curved top on it. So cylinder, think of like Coke cans or soda cans. Cones, think of like ice cream cones. Spheres, think about like balls and globes. Y'all should know what pyramids look like. You can think about the Great Pyramids of Egypt or the pyramids in South America. If you have a visual reference, if you have something you can tie it to in your brain, it's going to be easier to remember. And this has little grip lines on it. And when we talk about perspective, that's when we're going to talk about um, ellipses like this in which way they curve up or curve down to they curve they always curve up to the horizon line so then we have our little chest of drawers here the bottom drawer is actually sticking out a little bit and I would pulled that out just to make it a little more fun to draw a little more challenging so that we're not just drawing boxes and boxes and boxes which is cubes, think of boxes, think of six-sided dice. And you can see it comes together pretty quickly once you start understanding the basic shapes that make up the world. Yeah. 
these are clear so I'm gonna hint at that but I'm not gonna draw it all the way and by just kind of drawing it through so you can kind of see through the wall it looks more like a transparent object Then we have our little music box. Switch over to a sharper pencil. And it's got a little cylinder and then a little cross cylinder and that's the key. It has a little white base and then inside, oh, that's no good. Fortunately, I sharpened three. Let's hope this one doesn't break. We were working with Prismacolor, it would indeed break. And then you can't really see what's on the top. Then we're gonna move over here because we're working from front to back. So we've got our binder clip. And I use these for watercolor. So we have that cylinder and that cylinder provides the tension on the plates and the plates are what hold your paper together or hold your watercolor illustration to your board, whichever. Then we have our handles that allow us to provide or loosen the tension. And you also, as you get better at this, you're gonna to wanna to think about giving the objects that you're drawing some form and some depth, even a thin plate of metal like this is going to have a little depth to it, but we'll talk about that later on. That's not necessarily super important right now. Then we have this little bottle of, it's actually watercolor correctional fluid. And it's a series of cylinders like we talked about. has an oval on the cover on the front then this is actually sitting on top of a box of mints but we can't see the box of mints super well but that would be a cube then we have it's kind of like an elongated sphere it's a little calcifer paper clip holder that Joseph gave me a few years ago with our little calcifer, who's kind of like a sphere, sitting on top of a log, which is kind of like a cylinder. And the glass itself has some thickness, so I'm drawing the thickness of the glass. Then the top is a really narrow cylinder, kind of like a coin has a little basket on top which is a cylinder and then it has a teeny little pan and the handle got broken off many years ago unfortunately then we have our clip which is supposed to hold notes and that as we discussed is kind of a pyramid shape a very narrow pyramid shape and then the wire that connects everything is a, it's um, a braided wire, but for the purposes of today, we're just gonna sketch in a cylinder. Then we have our stapler, which is kind of an unusual shaped stapler. It's more rounded than they normally are. And we drew it as a couple of cubes earlier. But now we're just refining our shapes. And this is something that the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at this. So please practice it. And then I realized I didn't draw this spray bottle in the background. We'll get to that. So next we have this coffee cup. And we talked about how it could be a cone or it could be a cylinder that the edges have been kind of smushed in. And it's got 
a series of much thinner coin shaped cylinders on top. Not doing the best job, but that's okay. I think y'all are kind of getting the, the drift here. And then we have two rolls of washi tape on top of it. And then we can move back over here to the brush rest that we drew in as a cube. So let's let's refine some of those shapes. So it's got this little protrusion right here and it goes in like that and then it goes out like this and it's a three-dimensional shape so it does have some thickness it has some volume to it and then it's got these like teeth looking thing and that's the brush rest itself. You rest your brushes in that part. So then we have our bamboo cup of brushes that we said was a cylinder. So we're going to start with the bamboo cup. Pretty simple. And then each one of these brushes is actually a really long cylinder that has kind of a pyramid or a teardrop shape at the top, depending on how you want to think about it. And people are going to break shapes down, uh, break complex images down a little bit differently. You know, you're going to get some people who say this is a cone. Some people are going to say that's a cylinder. You're going to get some people who call this a cylinder. Some will call this a cone. Some people will not call that a taco. Um, it's really just about your perception and how you understand the world. So don't, if you and... Your art group, your art friends, which I highly recommend you assemble because it's easier to learn if you are working in a group. It's okay if you guys disagree. Okay, so that is kind of a very simple, refined sketch of our still life that we set up. Let's walk it back a little bit. Remove a layer. So here is the very basic three-dimensional shapes, and then I'll put up the photo I took of the still life so you guys have our original image. So I want to point out that normally when you're working from a still life, you're not working from a photo of a still life. You're working from the actual three-dimensional forms that you could, you could get up, you could move around, you could draw from another angle, you can manipulate them in real space, you can pick them up, you can figure out what shapes they are. Generally when you're working on a still life, you are working with physical things set up in front of you. but. You know, since we're doing this via YouTube, via the magic of cameras on the internet, I wanted to just kind of do a basic walkthrough with you guys, and that necessitates using a photo and using, for me, overlays like these. So I'm just kind of manipulating some of the shapes that we saw in our still life for you guys. So you guys can kind of see them and you can see them kind of rotated and you can kind of understand what we were dealing with a little bit better hopefully and I highly strongly multi multitudinously sorry I'm not even sure I might be making words up now I really encourage you guys to set up your own still lives at home practice at home practice with your own materials Practice with books, practice drawing your shelves, practice drawing stuffed animals, practice drawing things that have a very rigid shape, practice drawing things that have weird amorphous shapes, practice drawing things that look exactly like the object, I mean the, the volumetric shape, practice drawing things that are a combination of complicated shapes put together. 
Um, the more you practice these things, the more you do it, the better you're going to become as an artist, the stronger you're going to be as an artist. And this is something that doesn't have to take up a lot of time in your day, but it will pay off later on in the end, particularly in when you're doing perspective things and understanding spatial relationships and understanding form and atmospheric perspective. This is going to be really useful. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you found this helpful, useful, and informative. I hope you found it fun. And I hope I've inspired you to draw your own still lives. And I hope I hope I've introduced a new understanding, a new way of drawing for you because my goal here on this channel is to make art accessible to people on a wide variety of age ages from kids who are not satisfied with their education at school and they want to learn how to draw on their own time to adults who always wanted to learn how to draw and never had the time or never had the support or never had the resources. I want this channel to be a great resource for you. So if you do find it helpful, useful, and informative, please share this video. Tell people about this channel, help spread the word, help me get new viewers here, and feel free to send in suggestions. This channel is COPPA compliant via, or based on YouTube's definition of that, which means sometimes I don't get your comments and I no longer have a community tab where you can talk to me, but you can reach out to me through email at becca.hilburn at gmail.com, or you can get a hold of me through my Discord server, the paint box. It's a very friendly art community focused on art supplies and art improvement. I would love to see you guys there. You guys can find a link down in the description below. That's a great place to ask me questions and to request demonstrations like this one. So I hope I'll see you guys again really soon. I want you guys to check out my favorite drawing tutorials playlist for more great drawing tutorials. I can show you how to draw anime stuff. I can show you how to draw people. Obviously I can show you how to draw objects and check out my intro to comic craft series and my making comic series for more on drawing perspective. I hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon and art nerds keep an eye out for these materials. They should be you should already have them so if you feel like you missed them just check on Patreon. All right guys I'll see you again soon. Bye! Okay guys, so we finished up our sketch. I hope this kind of sheds some light on volumetric drawing. I hope it makes it easier for you guys to understand. If not, let me know down in the comments below. I'm happy to record more tutorials and walk you guys through this again in the future. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys again really soon. If you're looking for more great art and drawing tutorials, I have a tutorial playlist that I'm going to link in the description here. It has all kinds of basic drawing tutorials that'll help you get started on your artistic journey no matter what your age is. I really believe in you guys. I'm cheering for you and I want to see what you guys draw. So I'll see you guys again in the future. Bye guys!